some questions, so just you know, feel free to continue getting ready. And okay. Speak freely if you like, or don't speak we're, freely. We're going out on a BFM ride, which is basic fighting maneuvers, where we go out and dogfight. And we do this over the water out in, uh, off the coast of Kunsan. And the water this time of year is less than 60 degrees, so we have to wear a, a poopy suit, that's what we call it. It's an uh, anti-exposure suit, which is a kind of a rubberized looking plastic. Uh, looks like a flight suit normally. Doesn't feel like a flight suit. It's a little uncomfortable, but it will save your life if you uh, eject it from the airplane and land it in the water less than 60 degrees. It's about probably 52 degrees the temperature in the water today. So if you did go down, it's going to give you probably an extra five or ten minutes, long enough to get into the raft. Uh, if you didn't have it, you probably die within a couple of minutes. So it's called a uh, poopy suit for a variety of reasons. But, uh, All right, sir, uh, you've been here for a year now and uh, doing your last flight today. Uh, what has the experience been for you like over the past year? It's, it's been good. It's uh, it's an excellent squadron here, the Juvax. Um, excellent leadership, excellent uh, pilots here. It's just the camaraderie is excellent. It's probably been my best tour in 11 years in the Air Force, even though it is a remote assignment. It's my second time here at Kunsan, and uh, it's, it's, this one's been a, a great tour. So um, the flying is really good. It's demanding a lot of uh, weather you have to deal with. Um, a lot of restrictions that the, the Koreans place on the airspace now. It's a little bit tougher than it was in three or four years ago, but still it's a great place to uh, fly the S-16. Um, so this will be probably the, uh, right now it's my best tour I've ever had. So even though I am in the remote, remote part of the world, and uh, so that's basically it. All right, so I, know this, I don't know if I'm saying what you want to say. Yeah, it's beautiful. Doing just fine, you know, just keep on tying up your boots there and stuff. And uh, I just have the microphone right here. Um, uh, what's a typical day for you? I mean, uh, describe what it's like, you know, working with some of the other guys and some of the things you guys have gone through uh, in day-to-day -day preparation. I mean, uh, we know readiness is the name of the game around here. And uh, how do you do that? Okay. Our, a typical fighter pilot day is... Uh, it's different every day. That's what we like about it, I think. Um, 12 hour days are probably the norm around here. We have to have 12 hours of crew rest, so a lot of times you're just planning right up to the last minute. Normally for a uh, air to ground mission or air to air mission, it's a lot of planning that goes involved. And you do that usually the day prior. If you're flying every day, like a lot of the instructors do here, uh, then on the weekends you're in here usually planning your missions. Uh, for air to ground, you usually, you gotta, come up with a detailed route avoiding all the threats and you'll come up with simulated threats or work with intel and uh, we have different scenarios that we work on so every week we have a different scenario that we work on and it's uh, simulating something that's up in North Korea um, then we work on our attacks uh, and different types of tactics that you want to go out and to uh, do different types of practice type attacks just to to work on uh, habit patterns um, then with the air to air, we go out and work on the basic things like we've been doing today, basic fighter maneuvers. And then we go out and do intercepts later on, so it's a building block type approach. And then you're all the way up to a 4VX, which is four planes against four or more dissimilar assets. And uh, you go out and fight F 18s from the Marines over in Japan or the F 15s down in Kadena. And then usually on Friday, we'll have a large force employment where we'll go out and we'll have live bombs. We'll drop on a variety of different targets, and uh, we usually have some adversaries, either F-15s or F-18s. So that's kind of a normal week. The wingmen usually fly about three times, and the flight leads probably every day, because we're being Kunsan, we're usually short of experience, and that's probably our uh, biggest limb fact here at Kun, is experience rate for our pilots. So if you're an experienced guy like me, you're, you're flying every day. And uh, it's, it's a demanding lifestyle. You go home, on the weekends I prepare my meals for the whole week, so I might rush in, throw stuff in the microwave, eat, go work out or whatever, and go to bed and you're in the same process every day. And if you're a flight commander, you're, uh, you're doing a, writing awards, writing OPRs. So it's, it never slows down here at the Coons. And then we have exercises, and the exercises here are more realistic than I've ever seen. I've been stationed in uh, USAFE, ACC, and the United States, and uh, 
going to the desert. And over here, I'd say it's the most demanding for exercises and for preparation for realistic combat. And uh, wearing Kim gear, riding in APCs to get to work, and uh, rushing around on the flight line. And the flying is, is uh, demanding also. So, is it? Yeah. But I'm, I'm wearing a uh, flight suit over this today because on your last flight, they spray you down. And if you're wearing a poopy suit, they're going to open it up and fill this with water. Well, it's 30 degrees out there, so. Today, I'm going to wear a flight suit over this, and a jacket probably, and try to make it look like I'm not wearing a poopy suit. <laughs> Normally, we wear, and uh, once you've done this enough, you can zip your own flight suit up. What did you call it? What did you say? We wear uh, two different types of G-suits, and then you have to get the air out of this thing. Two different... Okay, Our system's called Combat Edge, and it's, it's, uh, it's made to, uh, to help us with the Gs. And the F-16 pulling nine Gs is pretty demanding on your body, so we have an upper body G-suit a lower body G-suit, and then our mask is specially fitted here with a, there's a hose that comes around the front and it will blow, uh, depending on how many G's you're pulling, it will force uh, air down into your lungs. The upper body G-suit is here to help keep your lungs from you know, expanding out and also give your body something to force itself against. And um, you'll hear when you listen to our tapes, once you're above about five to six Gs, you'll hear the air rushing through the microphone. And uh, it, this really helps you out for, mainly for uh, BFM, basic fighter maneuver missions, where you're pulling nine Gs. And it, it, it probably helps you out about uh, two to three Gs for me. And uh, it's going to keep pilots alive. There's been a lot of guys who have G-locked, which is G loss of consciousness, and this suit will, will save lives in the future from now. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this other flight suit on. I don't know if you want to film this, but this is my deception maneuver. Hmm. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fit it on here. I had it embroidered up at Osan just to be kind of obnoxious from the last flight. But I uh, put my wings and all that kind of stuff, so this is not normal. Of course, I'll probably get in trouble. It'll be on TV. This is the part that's not normal, so <laughs> you're filming. I still got a lot of air down in here, so you have to try to force the air out. By the time you get down, you're like a vacuum packed, sealed suit. I mean, we were a brand new F-16 squadron, so we we had lots of money. So the problem with just about everything. And normally I carry, you always carry gloves and you wear gloves. Piddle packs if you have to use the bathroom. Always carry a survival knife, flashlight, some Afrin for emergencies. Oh, now war we carry a gun here. There's other uh, flares and that kind of stuff. This is the immediate stuff that you'll need if you're down. And then we have uh, two. That's how it hooks up in the airplane. So it'll be basically. So in the airplane, this, you have all this stuff on, you're trying to, in the winter, you can barely move around, so you're trying to dogfight, and you can't even move around hardly, so it's, it's pretty challenging most of the time to do this. But this is a tester. Basically, 
it, just test to see if the mask and everything's working. It's my OD, but Tommy was with me, and that's what if he was lying and lying, you know, if he was lying line 12, we'd have an eternal limb.
look at the anticipation on the faces here. Oh yeah. That's okay, we only need like two of us here. No, no, bro. Come on down the ladder. Come on down the ladder, man. Come on down the ladder. Not better than Jet. Hold on, he doesn't have a picture of him. He does. Hold on, hold on. 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 Hold on, they said they were anticipating resistance here. Nobody's ever done anything over there. All right, arm. All right, open up the poopy suit. Open up the poopy suit. Open up the poopy suit. Hold on. Oh, he's got me. Let him make him stop. Come on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. He's not going anywhere. He's not going anywhere. He's going to try to bite you. I am pretty smart as hell. Come on. There we go. There he is. Right there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it is pretty full. Yeah! Yes, <laughs> 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 yeah, nice. thanks. Like a Navy flight suit. Hey, can we get a picture of it? Can we get the camera? Yeah, we'll get one of these guys and we can get in it. You guys might pick up plenty of cases of beer for this. Go ahead. I like it. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so first thing, uh, tell us your full name. Spell it, please. Uh, my name is Captain Ned Lynch, N E D. Okay. L I N C H. Okay. And uh, you F 16 pilot? F 16 pilot, uh, 80th Fire Squadron. Hey, fellas, I want to help you. Um, I have no recollection. Oh, sorry. A while a day about, uh, about what you do out here in Times with missiles, but it was it was a great time. Um, on a on a little bit more serious aspect, sir. Um, I know you guys are up there dog fighting, but um, I mean, uh, is this how you keep keep ready for the situation? Yes, it is. You know? Yes. Uh, what do you BFM do? is the basics for what we do is a building block approach to a full up. Uh, 4VX engagement where you're dog fighting and we simulated today MiG 21s and MiG 23 so we had a bandit one guy was a bandit doing MiG 21 maneuvers or MiG 23 so we're practicing for that close in dog fight if we ever had to uh, to do that of course right. that is the end game because hopefully we can shoot him with a missile first and be out of there right um, all of your uh, uh, Co-workers here were waiting for you, uh, and, and, and they felt like you might give them a little resistance. So, what do you have to say to them about that? <laughs> what I have to say? Well, I don't know. What do you, what do you mean? <laughs> well, I'm, uh, you finished your flight. They were all waiting. Oh for yeah, you. that that's just part of being a fighter pilot. Is the harassment part that goes around with it? Um, you, your last flight's tradition to be sprayed down. I'm wearing a poopy suit as we showed you earlier, so they filled it up. This thing is full of water, and it's freezing cold out here. There's snow inside here, so it's all part of just uh, fun and games, being a fighter pilot. It's more, it's like a fraternity, 
and uh, those are just some of the fun and game things that, that go with it. Of course, the fire truck just showed up. I'm probably going to get sprayed down again just because. Just because. But that's okay. That's okay. So that's part, part of being it. But like I said, it's been a great tour. It's just been one of my best tours in my life. And it's been great flying with the Juvets. Okay. Just a quick question. Uh, you can address, address him if you would, sir. You're wrapping up your year in Korea here. Can you talk a little bit about the... Uh, just the importance, maybe a little bit of the, uh, not so much the stress, but um, could you kind of mention uh, what it was like for you for a year being here in this hot spot here in Korea and, and you know, having to fly at such a high ops tempo, a high level of readiness. Can you, could you comment to Sergeant Hughes about sure. that? Sure. The ops tempo is high here and throughout the Air Force as we downsize and do more with less, it's going to be a higher ops tempo. But here uh, it's even more intense because we're 109 miles south of the flat FIBA area where it would be. And uh, sure, we're ready to go anytime, and we know that. And uh, everyone is prepared, everyone is in the books, people work on the weekends. And uh, sure, after one year, people are starting to get burned out. That's the reason we have mid tours where we can go home for 30 days to see our family. And, but it's a tough, tough lifestyle being away from your family, being away from the United States, and being at one of the, the most remote bases in the world. And, but still, the camaraderie is the best you'll ever see it in the whole Air Force here. And uh, so that helps ease the uh, stress. All right, so, so where did you come Second, over from? I came from Eglin Air Force Base. Really? I lived down there for a while. Okay. Yeah, I miss that area. Yeah, I miss it too. Yeah, my brother was stationed <laughs> down there. Lived in Niceville for about a year. That's exactly where we live. That's is that right? You know that comfort in in Niceville? Sure do. I used to work there. Sure do. <laughs> Good area. So this is just practice, right? We're just talking? Oh, yeah. We're, he's oh, just okay. focus, focusing up his shot. <laughs> Are you rolling? Uh, yes. Let me just get his, uh, you get his name. Okay. Uh, just first of all, if I could get your first and last name and spell it how you'd like it to appear on the air, sir. Go ahead. Uh, David Scott, D-A-V-I-D, uh, S-C-O-T-T. -T. Okay, Lieutenant Colonel. Lieutenant Colonel. And can I you get bet. your duty title, sir? I'm the uh, squadron commander of the 80th Fighter Squadron of the uh, Juvats. Excellent. Okay. Yep. Sir, uh, if you could just kind of give me uh, just an overview of your mission here at, at Kunsan Air Base, just in a nutshell. Uh, obviously, the, the mission of the 80th Fire Squadron falls right in with the Wolf Pack, and that's the uh, protection of the, of the peninsula from the North Koreans. It applies to a lot of things, of, uh, what we call key result areas, and what we really do here, the first thing we, we need to do is we need to defend the base. So if something does happen, then we're going to defend the base as best we can with our F-16s and with our people. After that, we have a reception and bed down where we actually accept folks from uh, different places. This base becomes almost as, as big as any other interdiction base that you'll have ever seen over in the Gulf War. And Finally, we take the fight to North Korea. We actually go up there and do what we need to do in accordance with the ITO, the Integrated Tasking Order, that will come down from the 7th Air Force up there at, uh, at Osan. And finally, the mission, obviously, is also to take care of our folks, make sure our people are taken care of, that I can make sure they get a good job after this, and wherever they're going, whatever they want to do, I do as best as I can to take care of that. Beautiful. Great. We talked a little bit about, uh, a little bit in the room there about just the, the operations tempo here and that, you know, you guys are always high paced and working a lot of extra hours. And can you kind of comment on that a little bit? Yeah. You know, a lot of people, when you compare us to other outfits, they say that a lot of guys go TDY 90 days to uh, to the Gulf or 90 days to Bosnia and then the contingency operations. We kind of look at this as a 365 day contingency operations. We're remote here, so we're away from our families. Uh, there are a few folks that have families here, but it's very, very minimum. Uh, operations, I've been here six months already and we've had three OREs, operational readiness inspections or series we call them out here in PACAP. We've had three phase ones, we've had a PACAP base appearance inspection and right now we're going through our quality uh, inspection with a stand of Al and that's it. So the tempo here is extremely high and it's not going to change any. As soon as Christmas is over we're looking to probably get a phase one from the PACAP and then for the first time in a long time a pen peninsula wide ORI will hit us in April. Wow. Well, I think I think that's it. Unless there's anything else you'd like to add. Um, just do you, do you have uh, anything? maybe a comment, like you said before. Uh, you're ready to fight at a moment's notice. Yeah. And uh, uh, Sorry. that's what you train for, basically. You can just look at me. Sometimes. Okay. One of the things, uh, obviously, with the ops tempo and with all the exercises, is to make sure that we are ready. Uh, the tensions here are always high. There's, you know, you read the newspapers and uh, and you hear about it. Uh, what, about a month, month and a half ago, the North Koreans had a submarine that came down uh, down off the uh, East Coast. And we were put at a very high, tens high tension rate, high, you know, some things that we need. And we're ready to go. On, on a moment's notice, if something something happens here, this base will be the first base to do anything from the USAF point of view and from the Americans. And, and it's great to be with the people. 
maintainers and operators, because every one of them is, uh, is ready to do whatever they need to do to protect the peninsula. All right, great. Okay. Thank you very much. You bet. Thank you. Excellent.